welcome back to the Mighty Oaks podcast. It's episode seven tonight. It is the finals preview. We've finished the home and away season. And we're back for another episode. Thanks again, as always, to our community partner, Ray White, who has sponsored the podcast all the way through. Thank you to Ray White Oakley. And tonight, joining me back for a second episode, back by popular demand, maybe, Jeff Latham. Welcome back. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a little while between episodes, but it's good really, to have you back. Really happy to be back. Um, would have liked to be on a couple more times, but a few bits and bobs got in the way. That's all right. That injured We're finger sort of stopped you from coming on, did it? Yeah, look, stopped me from doing a lot of things, <laughs> but we won't get into that. Yeah, let's leave that alone. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Matty G, on again. Yes, good to have you. Yeah, thanks, mate. This time, not back from Noosa, so we won't have any more of those references. Thank you. Yep, Matt from Noosa, <laughs> he's back. He's Matt from Oakley. Look at that. <laughs> still, still lingering um, Alright, so tonight's episode As I mentioned, it's the finals preview We finished the home and away season We've got three of our five senior teams Into the finals We'll go through that very shortly We're Also, very excitingly We've only just started March But we already have a premiership at the club this year So we're going to talk extendedly about that Well done to the vets We'll get into that shortly With Jeff returning What's hot and what's not Fan favourite segment is back for another go and Jiro's quiz is coming back at the end of the episode so stay tuned into the end to see Jeff and I go head to head in Jiro's quiz locking horns and we'll go through the last two rounds round 14 and 15 so to start off with gents as I mentioned we've already got a premiership at the club this year which is amazing our veterans team which we've talked about at various points throughout the season on the podcast they won the flag so well done to the boys well done to the vets Huge win. Last episode, we talked about their grand final. They played that grand final out here on Warrawee Park a couple of weeks ago. They played Glen Iris B. And Matt, you were down watching the game. Tell us what happened. Yeah, part of the peanut gallery that came down to, uh, as quoted by the Glen Iris skipper, Bay 13. Uh, it was Good a st- crowd down? Yeah, very good crowd. Um, it was a bit of a stinker, so we weren't at the traditional hill at uh, Warrawee. We ended up... Uh, cooped up in the in the, in the coach's box or score box or whatever that is usually a couple of cold ones helps with that yeah didn't bother bringing no no we down. did we did oh, we good, we, good. we got it all set up um so we started off with about five of us and then once the the fifth 11 got their game done pretty quickly there ended up being about 20 25 blokes by the end of it so Fantastic. good crowd down um yeah so as you mentioned uh glenn iris um glenn iris batted first and we're all out for 98 uh, a few comic few comical sort of errors in there um main went main one being i'll give a shout out to ryan chapel fielding at uh cow corner the whole day big wing in for the run out for the run out both blokes still in the middle of the pitch having a bit of an argument and oh, then uh, on the way off apparently it was one of his mates so uh chaps was a bit excited to say the least and um the bat got thrown further than any ball got hit for the entire day i reckon oh, no. so it got catapulted um, Still got the strength in the arms to throw a good bat. Oh yeah, it went flying. So fair play to him. I, I, I respect that. But um, yeah, it was it was a good sort of bowling effort. Um, a lot of consistent good bowling. Um, we had Reese Martin take two for seven, and a former club umpire Peter Lombardo take two for nine off their sort of overs. Um, but rule is in vets that eight eight players have to bowl. So it was. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So. All of the boys that bowled throughout the day had like pretty good figures. Um, there wasn't anyone that really got uh, got a hold of from from the batsmen, and they sort of worked their way through the um, the the Glen Iris lineup to have them out for 98 after 30 overs. Bearing in mind that the vets play 36 over innings, mm-hmm. um, and then in reply we were chasing it. Shane D Rosario up top uh, with 42 not out, having to retire because in vets you have to retire at 40. The hero. Um, we were two for 87 or 86 at one point uh, before Chaps was out caught behind. And what led to probably the most stressful thing I've ever seen on a cricket field. So two for 86 chasing 99. 90, 98, yeah, target 99. And we lost, I think, six wickets chasing that. And I've never seen someone so keen to play for a draw as Harry D. Rosario was. Because we were the higher team on the ladder, so a draw would have meant oh, a so premiership If they for batted us. out the 36, it would have been a draw? Uh, no, it was more if we got to 98. Oh, a tie. <laughs> Rather a tie. than 99, because yeah. we were losing wickets <laughs> that quickly. It was like, please just get to 98 and we win. Um, but fortunately, 
Bit of good lower end order batting got us there in the end. Uh, seven for 102, four hit off the last ball to win us the game. Um, so, yeah, I think we had... So, Chaps made a few. Shane Dio Rosario, who ended up making or getting the man of the match award with his 42 not out. Normie. Um, yeah, batting Shane. Ball. Yeah, well done, Shane. Did all right with the ball and then d- completely dominated with the bat. Um, and then afterwards, good barbecue going down here, courtesy. Ben Salmon was on the... On the tongs for a little bit there, but Phil De Rosario, um, captain, organised all of it. And big shout out to him. He was the one that brought the core down from the Salesian team and mm-hmm. added a few top up plays from a few of the the fathers and stuff around the Oakley community. And and he captained the side as well. Didn't yeah, he, Phil? he did. So um, congratulations, was, Phil. Congrats, Phil. Um, so he was the main one that sort of drove all of this, and it was really good to see like all that hard effort um, go and get the the big rewards um so i actually ended up catching with catching up with niraj who um played in that game his father of uh rayan who's mentioned on the podcast before ray tv ray tv so we'll throw to niraj and hear what he had to say about the game i'm here with niraj after the vets premiership last weekend uh niraj do you want to run us through sort of like the day obviously you guys won uh won by four runs in the end run us through the day how did it all go yeah, look, it was a, a wonderful um, day. We um, we uh, bowled first, and uh, I reckon I could probably count on one hand how many balls we put down leg. So, you know, the bowling lines, good lines, good length, uh, and fielded brilliantly. I think the ground being um, Warrawee, the home of cricket, was um, a lot bigger than what they were used to. And um, uh, I think the field setting by Phil was fantastic, and we caught and fielded really well. So, yeah, we kept them to about 98, and, um, and we thought, well, you know, we're in with a red-hot show here, and... Um, uh, then uh, came into bat and uh, we were probably one for about 60, cruising really well with Big Shano at the top, um, you know, going great. Um, then a little minor slash major collapse in the middle, lost, um, I think probably lost six or seven wickets for, you know, 25, 30 odd runs, but ended up getting the runs um, seven wickets down and um, were quite relieved that um, it didn't go the other way. So it got a lot tighter than we expected it to. But it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful day, and great to get the uh, the premiership for the, the Mighty Oaks. Yeah, amazing. Obviously, first year for the vets at the club. Um, I was down in the game, so I got to see like a lot of the the good vibes and stuff. Is that what it was like for the whole year? Like it seemed very relaxed yeah. and very enjoyable. Yeah, it was. Look, it's not first cricket. Um, the the warm up probably uh, consisted of us getting our boots on, um, getting our spikes on. That was uh, the extent of our warm up. But look, we enjoyed each other's company. A lot of us hadn't played cricket together. They had a core group that had sort of come across with Phil and Shano and a few of the boys from Salesian, and then a few of the dads from Oakley jumped on board. Um, and, and, you know, the excitement train sort of built as the year went on. So um, to start off with, I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, we sort of had a, a few reasonable players and then um, a few others came along as we, uh, as we built a bit of momentum. And I think we finished the year, you know, wonderfully well and, and, and really enjoyed each other's company and a great bunch of blokes. So we're already sort of thinking about next year. Amazing. And obviously the scenes after the match, I saw the barbecue going yep. just before I left. Um, what what would run us through the scenes for the night? Any big celebrations? Well, look, I was on about three hours sleep having um, come back from Sydney the night before and uh, had to get, get the early morning flight back into Melbourne. So I was done by about nine. But I did see pictures uh, a few of the boys in a spa probably about 1am. So um, I'm sure the few of them kicked on and had a big night. So I uh, haven't heard from them. So I hope they're all still OK. Um, but yeah, they uh, they had a big night. So. Amazing. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And that was Matt joining Niraj out on the training track tonight, talking about the veterans winning the grand final, which was awesome. Um, Matt, just to wrap it up, you were here. Tell us a little bit about the aftermath of the game, the celebrations, because I believe it was quite a good night. Yeah, it was. Um, so as I mentioned, Benny Salmon was on the barbecue for a bit there. So they had a, a huge barbecue, which was really good. Um, Glen Ira stuck around for a fair while. Um, which was really good to see. Um, and it's just like really good camaraderie in, vet- in veterans cricket. So it was really good just to see, even though that these boys probably were a bit upset with the loss, that they all stuck around. They were mingling with our boys, all our boys, um, obviously with the relationships with each other, um, stuck around and we hung around with, uh, I think, Nicole uh, De Rosario, um, Phil's wife, and Harry's mum put on a pretty good spread as well. Um, and they're all in charge of bringing a plate or something so they had a really good feed afterwards um, a few of the boys ended up back at um, Harry's other uncle's house who played in the team uh, Tim Birdson um, ended up in their spa uh, so there's a photo going on I'll chuck it in there Phil uh, H and uh, Shane 
Tim yep. and uh, Peter Lombardo ending up in the spa. And that was about 1 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, we all got, got that the, message. Got the spa photo coming through late in the night. Yeah, so Beautiful obviously work. they had a pretty big night. I heard there was plans to go to the casino, whether they got there or not. I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, it was obviously a pretty good night because I heard that Phil took off the, the day the next day. So obviously they were pretty happy with Brilliant. their achievement. Ah. Now, I've got Deserved. a question. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, at the end of the year uh, with the Subbies boys, the ones through fours, there's a f- some traditions post-grand final. Was there any mid-wicket um, or central wicket celebrations? I don't think so. It'd be good to get them down because uh, yeah. that, that would be pretty funny to, to get their fl- well their shield rather than their flag, but their shield as well. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to get them down to sort of acknowledge that first year in the club and the success yeah. they've obviously had in their first year being here. And um, they're already talking about plans, as Niraj said, to, to go again next year. So that'd be a really good sort of thing as veterans cricket, I think, is like the fastest growing age group of cricket in, in Australia at the moment or something like that, I read. So, um, yeah, it was really good to see and hopefully it's a, the start for bigger and better things for veterans cricket at Oakley. I also yeah. have a, uh, a follow-up to my question. Uh, given there was a um, collapse of about five wickets, were there any ducks? I am 99% sure there wasn't. I can fact check because it was like pretty much everyone was scoring one. So if they've got away with no ducks, that's a pretty impressive feat. You, you know what happens. When yes, you, yeah, you yes I've yeah. heard the stories. Yeah, yeah. A few, uh, few traditions. Uh, everyone, uh, there was two. Niraj. <laughs> so Niraj, Niraj, we should have gone uh, on to him in the interview and, for that. Uh, Saranjit Singh. I'm not, I'm not well, quite sure who we'll have is. to get them down for the last night of the year uh, for oh the, senior, <laughs> the senior club. Um, that'll be a bit of fun. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. Absolutely. And before you get into what that is, we might leave that alone and um, <laughs> save that for the hopeful grand final edition of the Mighty Oaks podcast. But well done again to the vets. Congratulations to everyone who played. A shout out as well to Ryan Chappell, who's been at Oakley for 21 years. Now. Forever. 21 years. Hasn't played in a flag until playing in that veterans flag. So well done, chaps. Congratulations on that flag. Um, and well done to all the members of the team getting our first flag of the season hopefully the first of a few yeah very very good from them and uh yeah exactly right Um, for four flags hopefully you can bring home four all right we'll move on now we're going to talk about as i mentioned at the top we've got three senior teams that have qualified for finals our fourth 11 third 11 and second 11 so we're going to go through those teams their latest results and preview their first finals matchup which is coming up this weekend so firstly let's look at the fours Matt, I'm going to throw to you, we've got round 14 and 15 to talk about before we get to the final. So tell us about round 14 against Endeavour Hills. Well, round 14 was actually really conveniently timed for us, I think. It was basically a dress rehearsal for this week. Um, I think mathematically at that point, there was no sort of mathematical chance we weren't going to be playing Endeavour Hills. And with the threes doing so well, it was always a guarantee that we'd be playing at Endeavour Hills. So for us, this was a, a dress rehearsal, which was which is really cool because I don't think um, many times you go in a bit sort of raw and you don't really know exactly what you're going to expect. But to see the Endeavour Hills team with probably the lineup they're going to roll into with finals as as were we, um, is good sort of dress rehearsal for uh, for finals. So For reference, we'll get to it, but the fours will be playing Endeavour Hills again this week in the finals. Yes, thank which you. Which is what you were alluding to. Yes, and at Sydney Pargetta. Um, on their main ground this time, not their second ground. But oh, nice. um, yeah, so pre- I'm pretty sure it plays very similar so it shouldn't change too much but um we were put in to bowl first i think Jono lost the toss and we ended up bowling um there was enough in the pitch uh early as we had them four for 28 um sort of let them get away a little bit um their captain vaughn uh ended up with 66 um towards the end but he was sort of that rock he batted at number five and was the one that sort of batted with the tail and allowed them to just bat time. And um, in fourth 11 cricket, if you bat time, runs just sort of come. Um, and their number six just came out and started blasting a few runs around, uh, made a quick 540, uh, which ended up being very valuable for them. Ended up putting 80 on with, with Vaughn before he went out. Um, and then, yeah, Vaughn just batted with the tail. And, um, and yeah, so just allowed them to get to 190. Uh, upon reflection at the start of the day, we would have probably taken a 190. Um, but after having them fall for 28, I think we were looking at less than 100. Um, we were sort of targeting ourselves there to, to let them get to 190 was probably a little bit disappointing. Um, but in hindsight, that's okay. That's what the dress rehearsal was for. Uh, special shout out to Joel Ajani, three for seven off 10 overs, easily pick of the bowler for the day. Well done, Joel. Um, 
he was just managing to find the right areas. He he commented in the warm up when he was bowling a few to me. He's like, I'm on today, and I was like, All oh, right, oh, mate, let's see how we go. And good um, shout. Literally. 60 balls he bowled and 60 balls he hit the exact right spot every single time. I don't think he bowled a bad ball for the day. Um, he's playing some good uh, cricket recently, isn't he? I think not long ago he got his first ton for uh, yeah, one of our junior sides as well. Yeah, the 15 mm. Bs on a Friday night. So he's in good form with the bat from there. Go on, and Jolly. And then with the ball as well. Um, and then Taran, um, he's two for 37 or 14. Sort of the workhorse with a lot of bowlers that are restricted in that team. He's one of the only few unrestricted bowlers. So gets tasked with bowling overs in sort of random spots mm. having to sort of deal with the restrictions but is that because a lot of the bowlers are young and they have yeah yep. so if for people that don't know anyone under the age of 17 is restricted on the amount of overs they can bowl in a spell um so whether it's through four to seven overs it just depends on their age and all that stuff mm-hmm. but so that was uh yeah so day one endeavor hill's got 190 gee. day two day two um we could probably if we could have day two back we would definitely have day two back um all out for 115. Um, just the start was probably not what we were hoping for. We ended up being, I think, we were 47 runs after 45 overs. It's like a real mm. slow start. And that just sort of put pressure on the back sort of 35 um, overs. Um, I was a costly sort of victim to that, copying my first career diamond duck. So Oh, no. Um, yeah. Oh, talk us through that. that what happened? Rough. Um, so, Chaps was Whose fault? Oh, was it? You know what? I'm not quite sure. I think there were a few people that were to blame. A diamond duck so, in a two-day game as well. In a two-day <laughs> game. So, and you know what's even worse? It was my missus' first outdoor game. She's come down to watch. So it's like <laughs> just, it was the right on the wall. Yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, she was holding her tongues from saying, "Geez, that was quick. That would have been interesting." Um, <laughs> sure, you haven't heard that before. Blow-ups. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a big blow. No. Um, so basically, Chas was on strike. Uh, hit one to to point. Not. Ooh, wider cool. point he's cool um two point um not wide of him two points <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> but to be fair he was probably deep enough that there was a run there um and then yeah just pretty much got there apparently my bat was in the air I'm not quite sure about that um <laughs> so he called yes he went he called yes he went there. and yeah just hesitation no nah, no hesitation went um not as fast as i was back in the day so that probably <laughs> didn't help what are you, 20? Yeah, 22. That's but a bad call. Yeah, <laughs> shock 20, call. 21. But <laughs> I put on a bit of weight in my last couple of years. And anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> I've gone backwards in my speed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, prob- just didn't quite get there. Um, unfortunate, but yeah, it was just sort of this, the story of our day, to be honest. Um, really yeah. slow start with the bat. A few guys in the middle got out at crucial points. I know Doc was, Andrew Donahue alluded to the fact that he probably got out at the wrong time. Same with D-Roz as they were set. Just put too much pressure on the younger guys. But um, D-Roz with 27, Chaps with 27, and Joel Ajani at the end when sort of was a bit of a dead rubber. It was good to see him make a few runs as a bit of a confidence booster. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, pulled up by about 75 runs. We're all out for 115. Um, Unfortunate. Yeah. That's all right. So we'll head on to round 15, though. Um, Bayswater bowled... Well, we one bowled day game again. One day game uh, for the last game of the season. Uh, we bowled to Bayswater first. Uh, nine for 115cc. Um, Harry Di Rosario, three for 13 off eight, bowled a treat. Um, third wicket was an interesting one as the batsman shouldered arms to a straight one. Um, clean bowling, which is pretty funny. Uh, Jack Oldest Al- trick in the book. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Jack Allen, two for 16 off his five, were probably the two pick of the bowlers. Um, Oaks chased it down, seven down for 116. Probably would have liked to have kept a few more wickets. Uh, Doc with 28 and Ryan Chappell with 24 not out, obviously proving their classes. The older, the older statesmen of the team. Um, that win took us to nine wins, three losses and one draw. Uh, ended up meaning that we finished second, but as we alluded to, we'll be playing semi, uh, Endeavour Hills away for that semi-final just because of the ground unavailability. And uh, that final round win against Bayswater also knocked Bayswater out of the finals? Yeah, it did. Um, that would be satisfying? Well, yeah, it was, it was interesting because they were a bit COVID-stricken. Uh, I think they were missing 15 players across the grades. Sorry. So less satisfying yeah, it was a little bit less satisfying they were always going to be up against it but um just a sort of good momentum builder to go into finals with the win which is always important yeah absolutely and as you mentioned so the fours finished second on the ladder in the fourth 11 it's a top four finals 1v4 2v3 sudden death you lose you're out so we'll be playing against endeavor hills away in a two-day game in the fours we've played them twice this year and lost both of them 
Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to turn that around to yep. get that win and move into a grand final. So yep. good luck to the boys in the fours. Yeah, good luck to the fours. All right, let's move on to the threes. The threes being statistically our most successful team, finishing on top of the ladder at the end of the season. Uh, let's look at their last couple of games. Round 14, they played against Endeavour Hills as well in a two-day game. Actually won this game outright, uh, which means they get 10 points and this win catapulted them from second to first. In this game, Endeavour Hills batted first and they were all out for 41 on day one. Congratulations to Maxi Getley. Five for 15 off 13 overs. Huge effort, great figures and a great spell. Well done, Max. And Anthony Howes, the skipper, four for six off 11, which is you know pretty handy as well. So well done to those guys. Bowling out Endeavour for 41. We then began to bat on day one uh, and into day two, continued to bat. Finished four for 214 and eventually declared. About 170 runs in front, pretty handy. Well done to Damesh Patel. Unfortunately, out on the old unlucky number, 87. Luke Rhodes, 52. And Carlos Wakefield, 32. In that score of 214. Declaring relatively early on day two, sending Endeavour Hills back in, who got off to a pretty good start this time. I think we're none for 50 or none for 60, around about that mark. Mm. Before the toe crusher, (laughs) our man, big Aaron Lund, came on and took five for 21 off his 12 overs. Yorker specialist. Uh, Yeah. Absolutely. Do not like facing that man in the nets. Watch out for your toes. (laughs) Not Um, as my bat. Yeah. Hit the toe a few times. Uh, Five for 21, Aaron Lund. Also, well done to Fateh Singh, who got two for 26. And we ended up bowling them out for 138 and winning the game outright, which was wonderful in round 14. Moving on to round 15. uh, Again, they played Bayswater in a one-day game. Bowled first again. This time, bowling Bayswater all out for 69. Same two blokes, Fateh Singh, three for four off his three overs, and Aaron Lund, three for 23 off nine. So well done to those two. Manny Kingar, who's played most of the year in the twos, uh, perhaps a touch unlucky to get be dropped down to the threes, but had a really good game. He took two wickets, as well as Ben Salmon, who was also unlucky, unlucky to go down from the twos at this time of the year. Um, but two each to those two. Oakley chasing 69 were two for 70 and Manny Kingar was 32 not out off 51 balls. Just steered the ship, steered the boys home to a great win. Now let's look at finals. So that means overall the third 11 were nine wins, three losses and three draws. And as I mentioned, finish on top. They are going to play Croydon in their semi-final. Unfortunately, they're also playing away because our home ground is not available. <sighs> um, we're getting into that or are we... I'll steer clear. Well, <laughs> it is a bit ridiculous that first has to go to fourth to play a yeah, final. We would love That's to. Right. But honestly, as a club, we're pretty used to finishing on top and playing finals away. It's happened many times. So I'm sure they'll be ready. Uh, Croydon at Croydon. They played them twice this year. Once in a one-day game, once in a two-day game, and won them both. So 2-0 and against Croydon this year. First against fourth. Good luck to the threes this weekend in their finals. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, that's a um, bloody impressive side and, and a really impressive record. Um, they've been dominant all season. Um, looking at the lineup with some additions from the twos coming down with blokes coming back from injuries and mm. whatnot. Um, yeah, there are blokes playing in the threes that didn't deserve to be dropped from the twos. No, no, no. That and threes team's good enough to probably play second division. The entire team. You got some good players. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So. Um, obviously, finals is a different story and you got to stand up when it counts, but yeah, it's a bloody strong side. Good luck to the threes against Croydon this weekend. All right, gents, we're going to take a quick ad break here from our partnership with Ray White. We're going to come back for What's Hot and What's Not with the Big Barn, Latho. See you soon. The Mighty Oaks podcast is proudly presented by Ray White Oakley. Ray White is there to help with all your real estate needs, including buying, renting or selling your home. Go and see Jonathan Eves at Ray White Oakley and tell him the Mighty Oaks podcast sent you. Welcome back to the Mighty Oaks podcast and thanks again to Ray White, our community partner. Now that we're back into the podcast, it's finally time for this segment to return all the way since episode two we haven't heard from this segment. But Jeff Latham is here to tell us what's hot and what's not. Thanks, Milo. Well, firstly, I hope we've got some better visuals uh, <laughs> to, to pop oh no! Up on the, screen. the intro will be exactly the it stays same. Stays the same, yeah. right? Well, and, that's, uh, and the Instagram graphics will remain exactly <laughs> the same. Locked in for the year. Yeah, 
Fantastic. Um, no, uh, it's it's great to return. Um, I think we'll get stuck straight into it, but for, it. for those who, who don't remember, it's basically um, I've got a series of what's hot and what's not around the club. Can be on uh, on field, off field, or just my taste in particular. Um, whatever you like, really. Whatever I like. This is my. <laughs> this is your time. My time. Um, right. So we'll, we'll kick straight into it. Um, first go. one I've got. Uh, Crofty may disagree with this, so I hope he's watching. Um, it's singing the song uh, my particular way. So a, bit of, a little bit of backstory. So this is what's hot. A little bit of backstory is uh, when I came into the club at, in 2010, playing in the fours, um, had to kind of pick up the song by just listening to the other guys. Luckily, we sang it enough to pick it up pretty quickly. Yeah, because it wasn't written down anywhere, was wasn't it? It wasn't written down, but my uh, impression from the club was um, we were pretty strong off the field, back in the, in the rooms in the bar here, the soon-to-be-called Big Man's Bar, um, <coughs> no doubt. Um, That's not hot. However, uh, the start of the song does go where the Mighty Oaks, King of Subbies, where the Mighty Oaks. Subbies, of course. Sub district cricket. cricket, of course. Uh, my take on it, what I heard or my impression at the time was uh, Mighty Oaks, King of Stubbies, <laughs> with the Mighty Oaks. Uh, much, much better version in my point of view. And I've been campaigning. I've only found out recently when Neil Croft put up that plaque downstairs with the, the words of the song. I, so mm. I've only just recently <laughs> found out I'm wrong. How long's recently? Like, what was it, like two years ago he put yeah. that up? So for 10 so years. 12 years you were saying <laughs> King of Stubby, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it still am. Uh, <laughs> but have been recently campaigning and I reckon I've got a few blokes on board that are singing King of Stubbies with me. So um, that's going well. That's what's hot. Um, what's not is, and this one's not related, but uh, the injury list that we've had this season, the selection committee have mm -hmm. had an absolute nightmare. Not hot. And in, <laughs> and in turn has ended up in some horrible conversations that they've had to have, um, you know, coming into finals since we've got a few players back, myself included, yeah, yourself. Yeah, finally a lot of people are now back playing. Mm -hmm. But I reckon over the duration we will have had 10 to 15, I don't know, at simultaneously so yeah all at the same time being unavailable through injury um there's been guys going overseas and whatnot it's been an absolute shocker so that's absolutely not hot um we need to sort that out for season for a little forward. bit of reference i think we had 24 players play first 11 this season yeah yeah that's ridiculous so that's a little bit of an indication we've, of how many blokes missed games and as we said last week we had 11 debutants as well so yeah crazy. throughout the year crazy unheard of how many um, games have you missed with injury, Jeff? Yeah, a few, few. I think I played, I think, six before I got injured. I got injured at the um, Caulfield game. Came back, I think, early Feb. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I missed more than you. Yeah, one hamstring miles over there. <laughs> Actually, I did them both, so I've got zero hamstrings. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Anyway, um, Anyway, we, we move on. We're, we're getting healthy, so we're, we're staying healthy. Uh, touch wood. Um, that's wood, that's wood <laughs> um, all right. What's what else is hot? Uh, a few weeks ago, we had the iPod shuffle party function. Um, Good that night. was absolutely hot. That was a fantastic night. Um, drinks were flowing, uh, music was flowing. Uh, everyone was singing and dancing. It was it was great fun. Some good costumes as well. Yeah, great costumes. Do you mind if I ask what your did you guys purchase the song for the night? I did. Um, you had to dress up as your as your song. My song was Broken Leg. I came with a, uh, <laughs> oh, a moon right. boot on. Um, yeah, we, we talked about this on, on one of the other pods, actually. You <laughs> put a scare through a few blokes yeah. rocking up in the moon boot, yeah, including myself. Stampsy wasn't too happy with me. Um, but that's okay. Did you buy one, Milosh? Yeah, I had an Arctic Monkey song. Okay. Came about halfway through, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. When did my song... Yeah, because I wasn't here for the night in Noosa. Ah. Uh, um, when did did anyone figure out when Love Me Again came on by John Newman? That was my song. I think we crossed that out before the function started. Yeah, I don't recall hearing that at all. Oh, that's bullcrap. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Maybe it played in Noosa. No, it definitely didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on a related note, what's not hot is paying $255 for four <laughs> songs to win the $300 <laughs> prize pool. So, uh, well, Turtle... Still a profit. <laughs> Still a profit, but 
It's, I don't know. It's a, you've worked hard for not much profit there. Mm. Uh, Turtle, obviously, really good. Um, donated to the club. Um, put in for a fair few sw- songs uh, through the uh, what was bought the back bidding. In yeah, he auction, bought back yeah. in um, and was lucky enough to, to win. I think he was up against your partner for the last song wasn't it yeah yeah we yeah we talked about this on that episode my partner tilda thought she'd won because we <laughs> thought there was only two songs left but there was actually three and uh turns out turtle won so she's not too fond of turtle no. anymore well who is join the club <laughs> <laughs> um what's hot uh finals cricket's back which means red ball cricket's back yes um i did have this um down as my uh my segment couple of weeks ago when we played that two-day cricket game but i've moved it into finals cricket obviously red ball love red ball cricket i'm sick of white ball cricket <laughs> would be happy to never see a white ball again big agree on this one um but yeah really really exciting even though it's going to be what 35 degrees on sad days that, it was um, 39 that is both point. hot and not hot the <laughs> forecast for the weather for the but weekend regardless uh can't wait to get a red ball in my hand again um i'm sure all the, the guys are the same um what's not hot is Stampsy bowling cutters from his third ball as my opening partner roughing up the shiny side <laughs> it's crazy you, you play with a lot of different opening partners and some of them keep keep the ball so shiny for so long and then you get players like Stampsy who you just see him wandering in and flicking his wrist over it and the first over what is he doing yeah when you got a ball with it for 80 overs <sighs> So, not to go back on it, but I've just checked the temperature at this stage. 37 Saturday, 36 Sunday. Mun's not hot. It's going to be a hot weekend. <laughs> Mun's not hot. <laughs> oh, Never no. hot. Um, but yes, Nancy, <laughs> sort that out. Bowl seam up, please. Um, what else is hot? Uh, we've recently um, got in some new merch into the club. Some OCC track pants look <laughs> immaculate. Absolutely hot. What's not hot is that you have to buy a 9XL <laughs> unless you want them, want them to be this is skin, crazy. skin tight. This is crazy. We, we got them ordered up, um, I don't know, early in the season. So we did it in the mid-season order. Um, got the order in uh, just after Christmas. And I, don't know, I, I got them into my place. I tried it on first. And as a lot of you might know, I've got absolute tree trunks for legs. <laughs> Um, I think mm-hmm. I ordered a 5XL. It did not fit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually crazy. What, what item of clothing are you buying where you buy a 5 times XL <laughs> and you can't even fit can't into, get it. into I, it? I did get told by the guys, um, the, the suppliers. Well, that order six sizes up. That, well, it, it might be a little bit tight. You know, your calves are exceptionally big. Maybe order a couple <laughs> sizes up. I'm like, okay, I do know I have big calves. I'll cop that. I'll, I'll order so up. It, it's not a mistake. Like, no, are we no, sure no, it's not a mistake? No. You need to change your sizes. What, like, come don't on. It'll, it'll, it'll be followed up. Are um, these children's? Are they children's? Did you order children's <laughs> trackies? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. But no, it'll get rectified for next season, so we'll, we'll make Maybe it hot did. again. Yeah, we'll buy another pair. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, what else is hot? Um, now, this is sort of two-part, this one. It's both mm-hmm. hot and not. Uh, net etiquette. Or as uh, I've been talking to my partner about it, actually. She calls it netiquette. Netiquette. Yeah, yeah. you've been big on this last few weeks. Yeah, I have. I've had my... Um, <laughs> Leading by a, example, I'm been sure. Been getting a bit upset yeah, in the nets. Uh, big, big fast bowlers. You stand at the back of the net and batsmen walk through your run-up, looking at the nets, not looking at who's coming. You've got to teach them early. You probably, yeah, you. You probably got to teach the young fellas early by absolutely running through them <laughs> just to make sure they understand what net etiquette is. The batsmen often don't acknowledge, you know, the bowlers, and the bowlers are putting in hard work for the bats a lot of the time. We're over bowling. It's true. Um, it'd be nice if the bats sort of pitched in and, and helped out. And so when the net etiquette is good, when the, the batters are picking the ball up, throwing it back to the bowlers, not doing anything silly, getting out of their way, making sure everything's all right. That's great net etiquette and that's hot. Okay. What's not hot is blocking it and running past it, <laughs> making the bowler pick it up. Quick single, mate. <laughs> mate, it can be as quick as you want, but go pick up me ball. 
Yeah, what did they say? Run through hard? Isn't that the coach's directive? That's fine, but run back and get the ball. Okay, fair enough. Fair so enough. here's a qu- question for you. How far down the wicket does the ball need to go before it is the bowler who should pick it up? Well, half. Uh, I, I think halfway, and that's probably... So if it's on the turf part of the wick- of the, our turf nets, yeah, batsman should pick it up. Yeah, so if it's on on that side, or if if you've run, you can get you can pick bend down and pick it up while you run. While you run through, yeah, you okay, can. okay, it's not hard. But if it's in your half of the pitch, you can get it, or your partner can get it if it's on the, um, you know, if I'm bowling right, I'm over. If it's on the right side of the pitch, non-striker can pick it up surely. All right, just to finish this off, I'm gonna throw an opportunity to you, and I might regret this. But can you dob in anyone who's particularly bad at this net etiquette? Yeah, go for it. Look, I got you the other week, but you're usually good. I think um, I'm right. You are, you are. You get the odd preseason where someone is new that comes down. And I'm not going to... I won't pick on anyone in particular. Okay. Um, but Ching is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the, the ball will... They'll block the ball, but they'll, they'll hit it back to you. They won't bend down and pick it up. Oh, just along the ground. Honestly, I, I, I'd be tempted to pick it up and throw it at him. It's not that hard to bend down, though, Jack. Mm. To be, yeah, to be fair, I am going to go for... I'm going to defend the batsman in pre-season. Where are we supposed to stand? Especially at Young Gun. Oh, in the indoor nets. In the indoor nets. Yeah, it's it a is little tricky. Shocking. It's tricky. That's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Oh, you're talking net etiquette and you talk pre-season. We're in pre-season Young Gun. Yeah, so when you're, when you're set up, mm. about to go in, you should be standing back with the bowlers. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's nowhere else to stand. You're yeah. going to get Ad- driven by. Out of the way. No, fair enough. Okay. Okay. Anyway, yeah. moving Anything on. I, I do have one more, and mm-hmm. I'm sorry, this has been a little bit of a longer segment, um, but this is a new addition got added on Saturday night. Um, what's hot is Jimmy Ben scoring his maiden half ton in the ones. Well done, Jim. Well, well done, Jim. Jim. Knocked him all around the park. I know he's a little bit nervous uh, facing Feckety, but... Absolutely walloped him. Did I get it right, Fickety? I don't I know. think so. Mm-hmm. I've been stuffing that up, I think. But did a great, great job. What's not hot is Jimmy Ben coming back here and repeating his story all oh night. My. I think he stayed, would have stayed till 12, I reckon. 11 at least. And I would have heard that story at least a half a dozen times. Easy. Well, it was impressive because you saw the ball get launched and then play just stopped for five minutes. So I don't know where the ball went. Is but this one of the sixes? That yeah, the, I think it was well, his if, second last one. If and you were here said that night, you would have heard six times exactly where it went. <laughs> well, he, he dispatched it somewhere and then the game was delayed for five minutes on the frog box and then he's gone back and hit the next ball in the exact same spot. So fair play to him. But Well, anyway, I'm campaigning. Next time Jimmy Ben gets runs, he's banned from coming back to the club. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's my segment over. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jeff. That was what's hot and what's not around the club with the big man, Jeff Latham. Great to have the segment back and uh, maybe we'll get one more before the end of the season. Who knows? Let's move on. We're going to go through the second 11, which is the last team we're going to talk about who made the finals. Let's talk about their last couple of games. So round 14 was a two-day game against Box Hill at Box Hill. Jeff, you were playing in this game. Give us a bit of a rundown of how this went. Yeah, I wish I didn't. I don't think I did too well. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it was good. This was, like I was saying, back to Red Bull cricket. was really exciting for the boys. Um, I think we probably came came into the game probably not with the right attitude. You know, you can sometimes, you know, on top of the ladder, play a team that's, um, you know, not making finals and come in a little bit complacent, which I think we did. Um, but um, I'll run through the what, what went down. So we rocked up to the ground. Uh, Box of Wild, great ground to play at. It is a very nice ground. VFL ground. Mm, always nice play at a VFL ground. But, um, yeah, we rock up and, and the pitch is... It looks like it's the grass has just been laid. It had, like, these, like, long, thin patches that hadn't sort of blended in yet. It was... On the pitch on or the next pitch. to the pitch? No, no, on the pitch. Wow. Yeah. Um, it was bizarre. And so, I think Stampsy was planning on bowling first, but lost the toss, I, th- I believe, and we got put in. Um... But yeah, it looked like an absolute minefield. That being said, it didn't play terribly. Um, but yeah, so it was a, it was a long day for us in the field. I think um, standards in the field weren't at our best. Um, yeah, so, so Box Hill batted first. 
I think you... What did I say? The other way around. But I think, yeah, so Box Hill batted first. Look, our, our listeners are switched on enough to know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but thanks for the question. <laughs> um, yeah, bold first. Uh, Stampsy and I opened up. Um, Stampsy had a real long spell, bowled really well. I don't know, went to after drinks. Um, lots, mm. of, lots of maidens. Tied them down. When we weren't able to get a breakthrough till fairly early on. Um, and uh, Tommy Ison came in, was impressive fr- from his end for a little bit. And then Tyso replaced him and, and bowled a really long spell. Um, what did he bowl? 19 overs straight, I, I believe well. it was. Wow. So three for 52 Tyso. Um, bowled fantastic. And, and Stamsey came on, I think, af- not long after... Um, T for another decent spell. Um, ended up with three for 37 off. Um, almost half the overs, 26. 26 overs, yeah. <laughs> must, be, must have been a tie boy after that. Um, but yeah, and then Tommy Tommy came came in late, cleaned up the tail too. So three for 53 for uh, Tommy Ison. Left Box Hill with 215. So a fair chase uh, on day two for us. A mm-hmm. um, little bit more than what we would have liked, obviously. Um, we thought we were a good chance to bowl him out um, on the pitch that we saw. So probably not our best effort in the field, but we came out day two pretty pretty positively. Um, and, um, you know, thinking the, that if we played well, we'd get a good win. Um, unfortunately, the bats, uh, there was lots of, lots of starts for the bats, um, but not really anyone converting. Uh, Jimmy, Ben, Carter and Rob or with uh, 32, 28, and 25. So um, no one sort of going on with it. There was a few more scores than the 20s, I reckon. Um, and we fell short with mm. 157. Yeah, so an unfortunate loss for the twos there who'd been going really well. They lose that game to Box Hill. Just want to ask you quickly, last episode on the podcast, Trent did a top five best tees in subbies and his number one was a box hill specific box hill game 2008 2009 but season. out in box hill how was the tea at box hill well we got a message during the week uh from one webby he he'll message us letting us know um you know if the a club's supplying tea or if we got to supply our own unfortunately we had to supply our own and what the tea what the twos have been doing when they're playing away uh which they've been doing all season for some <coughs> reason pretty much um sounds standard <laughs> like four four or five home games anyway um is relying on turtle uh, apparently the young fellas don't know how to bring their own tea i don't think so turtle also followed webby's uh message with a turtle's tuck shop will not be open this weekend so he's been kicking up a fuss um if you asked him it's that is not hot um <laughs> but it's not his segment so um yeah, yeah. so well, Unfortunately, the, the twos had to supply their own tea. Yeah, so Box Hill not supplying any tea. So they've fallen a long way from the uh, 15 years ago prawn, prawns and chocolate, chocolate fondue. covered strawberries. And it's disappointing from you, Box Hill. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> second 11, last game of the year was round 15 here at Warrawee against Malvern in a one day game. Uh, this game was to cement second place if Oakley could win. Malvern were sitting in seventh, I think, and could make the finals with a win. So that was a big game for them. Playing for a few cups in this one, the, the boys were saying. The Manny Kinga oh, Cup. The, Ma- the Manish Kinga the Cup, yeah, Oakley um, v Malvern. The Sumi Kinga Cup. The Jimmy, Jimmy Francis Cup, I think, as well. True. Apparently he played there. With the amount of teams he's played for, you could make yeah. a tournament out of that. Sort out, Jim. <laughs> Um, but no, there's a, I think there's a few crossover. But um, anyway, uh, Malvern, a h- rare home game for the twos, mm. um, which is good before finals because we'll be um, starting finals here anyway. Um, we posted uh, a really good score. Um, got put in. It was a pretty green-looking pitch. looked a little bit soft. Um, so we got put in the bat and put it on a, a nice score. Four for yeah. uh, 193. It actually played well. It was... Th- Probably the best Warrawee wicket I've batted on this season, which is yeah, not saying a lot because I have missed a lot of games. But you know, how'd you go? Uh, well, I put on a 64 run opening partnership with Rob Howes. <laughs> got 24, uh, but Rob batted beautifully. Rob was our top scorer, 66. Batted uh, after I got out. Batted with Anch, who ended up with 58, and some really good hitting from Jordan Brambleby. 40 not out off 40 balls. Yeah, got us to four for 193. Really good hitting. 
yeah, a couple of sixes, I think. How's the um the the scoop shot? Yeah, from some him? really good hitting and some really good ball hitting body when you tried to scoop <laughs> or ram a couple towards the end, which yeah, not not your shot, Jing. I don't think yeah, it probably wasn't wasn't it, unfortunately. But no, it was um was impressive by by those three bats, even yourself up the top with Rob putting on that partnership and um to only lose four wickets um in our 45 overs was great it's a good day ba- batting yep. through and, and 193 is always going to be tough at warrawee so we came out with the ball um early on there they had their two big bats um yeah, it was interesting tactics up. wasn't it we, we knew that their, their two guns were opening we knew that they could both hit a big ball but they were relatively conservative i would say the first 10 overs very watchful yeah yeah my um my fly slip didn't really come into play yeah we tried to get rid of that about four times but yeah, I know. I liked it. I yeah. liked it. Um, but no, the, look, they did play the odd aggressive shot, but they're a little bit more measured than what uh, we probably anticipated. So, play did play some some strong shots down the ground when it was nice and full. Um, mm. So, well played by them. But once we changed it up, got um, what Turtle and Tommy Ison in. Actually, let's let's quickly talk about this because they were. I'm not sure exactly. They might have been like none for 30, none for 40. And then they played five minutes of the most insane cricket I maybe have ever seen. They imploded. Yeah. Tom Ison came on to bowl. Let me tell you what happened. (laughs) He's bowling. I'm up to the stumps. Left hand bat. It's sort of on his hip. He goes to pull it and the ball kind of gets caught in between his arms and his hip. And it bounces behind him. And it looks like it might be going to bounce onto his stumps. So he tries to knock the ball away with his bat and hits the stumps with his bat. Uh, so he's out hit, hit wicket. Then the next over, uh, there was a free hit. The number three batsman skied the ball. Rob caught it at first slip after running back a couple of metres. The non-striker, who was their captain, <laughs> decided to just walk a single <coughs> down the wicket and Rob threw the stumps down and ran him out. And then their number four got our LBW for a golden duck. So we got consecutive wickets really quickly. When Tommy Ison came into the attack, and he'd a, he had a great day in the end, taking five for 28. And I actually caught up with Tom Ison on the training track to chat to him about this fifer. Let's hear from Tom now. I'm out on the training track with Tom Ison after he's taken fifer on the weekend in the second 11 in the final game of the year. Tom, congratulations, fifer. How did it feel out there? Um, I felt good when I first came on um, in my first spell. I probably lost a bit of consistency and then... I was lucky to get a second spell again. Stamps is like, I just need to bowl one over from the other end. Um, and I thought, okay, damage control, you know, they're probably up at about seven eights. Um, so just really simple. Get them tipped to the sweepers and um, fortunately managed to get a few at the end as well and was probably a bit lucky. I had a couple that weren't great balls, but that's how it goes. Um, leading up to in a couple of weeks, I'd been bowling uh, relatively solid. Um, <laughs> and probably didn't get much reward, so I guess just take it where you can get it, and hopefully, um, hopefully I can keep it up in finals because that's where it's most important. Absolutely, and I just wanted to touch on you, you sort of mentioned it there, but you've taken five wickets in a match where no other bowler took more than one. Do you think there's anything that you did particularly well bowling that day, or what was your main focus at, in your early spell and then in your late spell? You mentioned getting to hit to the sweepers late. What about early? Early, um. Like, my natural game plan is always I'm not particularly quick. I'm not a big mover of the ball, so I've got to try and challenge the stumps. Um, you're usually keeping up, so it's pretty handy, um, which means I can push them back in the crease a bit and hopefully just get a touch of variation and try to get them on the pads or, or just bring the stumps in the ball every equation. So I try to be pretty attacking. That can go both ways. Did get hit for, like, a massive bomb. <laughs> um, you know, I always end up going for a couple of boundaries, to be honest. But um, that's, that's the way I like to bowl. I like to... Um, you know, uh, bring the stumps into the game. And so I just tried to be really attacking. And then when I have to adjust it, I will. Sometimes I don't like doing it. But in that second spell, yeah, that was all that was. Just adjusted to the game plan, talking with stamps and stuff. Felt mm-hmm. felt really comfortable doing that. Um, yeah, and just, just managed to work out for me, which um, was pretty lucky. But you take it. Yeah, perfect. And was there anything in the lead up to the game in particular that you did differently or you did well? Uh, lead up, always the same. Get down to the Valley Food Store, uh, who are my sponsors. They're platinum sponsors this season. Uh, great local business. Uh, massive shout out to Jimmy and Sue. They're awesome. Down there on Chadston Road. Great food, great coffee, everything. Um, so I'd like to thank them heaps. 
Um, no, nah, so not much different. Yeah, just headed down there, got a bunch of caffeine in, had a uh, bacon, lettuce, avocado and tomato toasty, uh, which was beautiful as always. Um, and then, yeah, always, always just try and get a good solid warm-up in. Other than that, nothing much different. Valley Food Store, though. Very lucky Adam sponsored me. Great local business. Fantastic. I'm sure they'll be stoked with that shout-out, and thank you for sponsoring. Um, last question. That was the last game of the year. We're about to head into finals. You'll be in the second 11. We finished second on the ladder. Uh, are you excited about finals? And uh, what's the one thing that you are focusing on going into this weekend? Uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it's number one focus. Um, at the end of the day, in cricket, you really don't have a heap of controls to how you perform, obviously, just because just the fact you can bowl well and not get a heap of wickets, and sometimes you bowl poorly and you get a few wickets. Um, you know, there might be periods where it's not going well for you, but your teammates stand up and you get a win and you just enjoy it. Uh, a lot of guys have, have packed up now and are done for the season. Uh, it's the most exciting time of the year. You know, you hope to perform well and do well by your team, but enjoying it's always the most important thing. It's, it's just an awesome time out there with the boys, and I'm just so excited to be out there. Absolutely. Well, good luck for finals. Thanks for joining us, Thanks and well done on your FIFA. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was Tom Ison chatting to me on the training track about his FIFA. Well done, Tom. As I pointed out in the interview, he took five for 28 off seven this day. No other bowler in the match took more than one wicket, and it was a pretty good batting wicket, uh, especially by Warrawee standards. So well done to Tom. He turned the game. We ended up bowling Mullen all out for 156, and I think he took the last three or three of the last four because one was a run out of you bowling off your own fingers and you bowled someone. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that, Jeff. <laughs> and I, I gave him that last wicket too. Oh, yeah. Why, when why you tried your, to get someone out the last ball. Why do you walk him, mate? I'm trying to get him a, an opportunity. Anyway, You're welcome, well, Tommy. Well done. Tom Ison, five foot. Congrats. Anyway, that win took the overall record of the seconds to 11 wins and four losses, solidifying second position. We are going to be playing at home here at Warrawee against Caulfield this weekend in the first final. We played Caulfield here in a two-day game during the year and had a pretty bad loss. We bowled out for about 50 or 60. The team is very different now to what it was then, so hopefully we can turn that around and get a win in that final. All right, we're going to go to another quick break and we're going to come back, wrap up the fives and the ones and Jiro's quiz. Hey OCC community, my name's Matt and you're listening to the Mighty Oaks podcast. Support us by following us on YouTube or checking out our socials. Welcome back to the Mighty Oaks podcast. Before we end this episode and get to Jiro's quiz, we're going to quickly go through the fifth 11 and the first 11. Unfortunately, neither of these teams made the finals, um, but they did have a couple of games each to round out the season. So we'll go through those. Round 19... So the Fire's only one-day game, so they end up playing 20 games or 20 rounds overall. Round 19, they played the Melbourne Strikers, bowled them out for 47, with Jack Allen, Sam Duckett and Noah O'Neill taking two wickets each, and chased them down, not entirely comfortably, five for 52, but they got the win. High score of nine, I think it was. Yeah, no, no one hit the double figures, no one made the sheet. <laughs> Round 20, we played once again the fan favourite Thornbury Turf Strokers. <laughs> Uh, who batted first, made 6 for 164. We had Sanjay taking 4 for 23 and Josh Kerr taking 4 for 40. So well done to those two guys. In response, the Oaks chased them down, 6 for 165. Anthony Howe's 55 of 58 balls. But the hero, Big Benny Salmon, Noodles, Noodles. Wow. hitting 77 of 65 balls, including a couple of sixes out here at Warrawee. I did not know he could do that. Did you boys know he could do that? <laughs> Funnily enough, yes. Um, during his junior career, he was a bit of a, he was pretty handy with the bat, um, so I knew he was good for a few big hits. Um, but yeah, seventy-seven. He, he, you know, I think he's very underrated with the bat. It's, yeah, uh, big Benny Salmon. <laughs> well, well, the way he was crunching them on Thursday night, he, he's last got a week. case. He's got a case there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. well done, Ben Salmon. Uh, Oaks took the win, so winning our last two games, which was pretty nice. There ended with seven wins, eight losses, four draws, and finished sixth on the ladder which is a good recovery considering there was a time there where they were languishing in the bottom two. Probably a, a quick shout out to Carlos as well. Captain the, uh, yeah. the fives for the season, did a great job, obviously came great over call. not knowing anyone and um, you know took the helm and did a really good job. So great work, Carlos. With an ever-changing team. Absolutely, well. yeah. I think I looked them up as well. They had over 40 players play <laughs> throughout the season. So that would have been a tough challenge for any captain. So well done, Carlos, and well done to the fifths. Their season is now done, and we look forward to them returning next season. 
also quickly look at the first 11. Last episode, we talked about their path to the finals, which was a little bit complicated, needing results to go our way. But the main thing was they needed to win both games. Unfortunately, they did not win either game. Round 14 was against Box Hill here at Oakley. Started off really well. Box Hill batting first and all out for 141. And a fantastic spell from our coach, Matt Grace, who took 7 for 35 off his 18 overs. Uh, really tore the heart out of him. And we were very confident, having bowled him out for 140, that you should be able to chase that in a two-day game. However, we had a disastrous half an hour. We had about an hour to bat at the end of day one and finished at 5 for 12. Had four blokes making ducks in a row and uh, a lot of blokes nicking balls and I was included in both of those things. <laughs> Still hopeful overnight though. We had a... Ryan Pearson hadn't batted. Um, had a sore neck. As well. Nath Harford was not out. So we definitely went in with some hope. On day two, started out relatively well. Didn't lose a wicket for probably the first 45 minutes or so and had a couple of good partnerships for the 6th wicket and the 10th wicket. But ultimately, all out 82 didn't really get anywhere near it, uh, which led to a kind of exciting afternoon. Box Hill, despite the fact that they bowled us out on the stroke of T, insisting that we keep playing, looking for an unlikely outright. Box Hill came out and batted again. 6 for 82, which was probably only off about 15 overs. So they were swinging the bat. But well done to Josh Peake, who got 4 for 38 in that second innings. And then they put us in to bat for a short period of time at the end. And we were 1 for 41 with not much really to report. So an unfortunate loss for the ones. And that loss meant that we couldn't qualify for finals. But we went into round 15 against Malvern at Malvern, uh, hoping to take a win out of the season and sort of play with some freedom, have a bit of fun, which for the most part we did. And playing for the Shield as well against Malvern. Yes, the uh, Val Holton Howland Shield, which... We'll be around here somewhere. We might bring it up. Well, well, well we might not now because we actually don't have it. It belongs at Melbourne. Um, well, it belongs here, but Shock it's temporarily call. at Melbourne. Uh, Oakley batted first. Posted nine for 231, which is a really good score. A great innings from the skipper, Ryan Pearson. 90 off 97 balls with 10 fours and two sixes. And then, as you mentioned in the What's, Hot, What's Not Can segment... We not? Can we not? James Ben, 59 off 47 balls, five fours and five sixes, which is... You know, that's pretty good. Well done, Jim. I heard he was post um, three runs off 23 balls. Yes. Well, that's what we heard. We got the score. James Bend off three off 23. Next, we heard he was 50 off 40 or something. <laughs> like, oh, he's well done. Post stamp of a ground. It is a small ground. Um, but I think he was clearing most grounds by the hitting, sounds of it. He was hitting pretty big. Malvin chased it down, unfortunately. Eight for 232. One on the second last ball of the day. Pick of the balls for us. Ben Fletcher... Three for 36 off his nine. Josh Peak and Raza surrendering, getting two wickets each. And then, yeah, losing on the second last ball. So, unfortunately, the end of the season record is six wins, eight losses and one tie. And ended up finishing 12th. So, a disappointing year overall from the ones who were certainly aspiring to play finals and perhaps even go a lot further than that. Um, but in the end, they don't make finals. Um, but there's still plenty of positives to take about it take out of the season we might chat to some of the guys in the ones in in later episodes to sort of wrap up the season but that is them done now before we finish the episode we're going to have the return of Jiro's quiz which debuted last episode uh, I faced off against Trent I won very comfortably so I'm pretty happy with that Let's see if I can beat the big man, Jeff Latham. Matt, let's throw to you for Juro's quiz. Yeah, very structured this week, Miles, so you won't be able to get easy points by listing an entire 11. So uh, we'll, it will be first in best dressed. Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> warming up. Uh, so buzzers will be your names or nicknames. So Milo or well, Latho, what are you going to go as? Latho? Or I was going to go with flags. Righto. Okay. Well, I don't, we won't know who you're talking about. It's a buzzer, mate. It's a buzzer. <laughs> You've got your buzzer. Oh. My buzzer's flags. Legend. Can we give him a minus one point for that? Hey, it's no, your quiz. It <laughs> it's your quiz. <laughs> no, we'll go through it. All right, so same as last week, I've got some generic questions for you guys, and then I've got some Oakley-related questions. Let's go. So starting off, um, who was the first player to reach 10,000 test runs ever? Miles. Yes. I'm going to 
Nope. Bum, bum. Oh, I think I know it now. Latho, I'll flip, throw to you. Chance of redemption. Um, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, Lara? Bum, bum. Son of Gavaskar. So that's no points to either of you. Bad start. All right, second question. As of February 2024, who was the number one ranked test batsman? Miles. Yes. Joe Root. Bam, bam, again. I have a chance. Uh, Kane Williamson. Ding. Yes, that Let's is correct. Go. Kane Williamson uh, is one for the, the Kiwis. One for the Kiwis, although after this last test, I'm not quite sure if he'd still be number one. Anyway. Um, mm. So in that said number game... Number one at getting run out. Yeah. <laughs> by running into his teammate. Um, so in the same match, we'll stay on the same match. Um, obviously, as famously known, Josh Hazelwood and Cam Green had this record had a record second highest 11th or 10th wicket stand. Who had the highest Miles. for Australia? Miles. Yes. Phil Hughes and Nash Nager. Yes, bang. I'll give you a oh. bonus point for the game. That was the Ashes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was an Ashes test. Yes, but what year? 2000. Slags. <laughs> no, it's from bonus point. 2000. It's 13 or 14. Come on, give me one. 14. Bam, bam, 13. Uh, with that bonus one. Yeah, because we had the ashes and then six months later they came out and we whitewashed them. Andy Wurzel. All right, so <laughs> what does that make give for score? So that's one each one going into the next one. Uh, how many times have Australia won the 50 over World Cup? Flags. Yep. God, lots. Um, no, good on you. Yeah, thanks. I don't think lots was there, but five. I'm tempted to four. say... Four. Bam, bam. Six. Bam, bam. Five. Oh. Come on, boys. Seriously. Come on, get around the Australian team. Uh, okay, so One this... <laughs> anyway, so for the last general question, how many modes of dismissal are there in cricket? Oh, flags. <laughs> Go on, Jeff. Nine. Dun, down. Better get the sound effect. Fifteen. No. Bam, bam. There is 11. So for those playing around at home, there's bold, LBW, caught, run out, stumped, hit wicket, handled ball, obstructing the field, hit the ball twice, timed out, and man cad. So that, that doesn't count as run out? No. Man cad's a separate dismissal. Okay. Yes. Well, one it's contentious. All. Some people say 10, some people say 11, but you didn't get either right. Yeah, so. We're not scoring well here. No, you're not. It's, uh, maybe I've got to dump it down for you blokes. Um, okay, so on to the Oakley-specific ones here. Mm-hmm. Um, who has made, as of Christmas this year, so not including post-Christmas, who has made the most half-centuries in club history? I'll give nice. you a hint. It's an active player. Andrew Donahue. Down, down. God, that was a good shout. Active player. I think I think I know who it is. My, I reckon my guess would be Chaps. Bam, bam. Close. Dimesh, um, Dimesh Patel Dimesh. with oh, over fifty. Of course. So Dimesh over, made, over fifty. Yeah, well, he's well, he's made fifty to Christmas, and then we just mentioned he's eighty-seven before. Wow, that's uh, Sam unreal. Blackburn forty-two, BJ thirty-eight, Rob Howes thirty-six, hmm, Ryan dookie. Chapel. Chapel at five with thirty three, Val Holson thirty two, Doc at seven with twenty nine, Jared Travagliard with twenty seven. Get points for being closer. No. No. Uh, Craig twenty six and Sam Jones twenty five. Uh, so we'll go next one. Ben Pinwell played from nineteen ninety eight to twenty eighteen. Uh, also known as Spike, he probably played with you blokes towards the end of his career. Mm-hmm. Um, had a decorated career, but how many fifers did he take in his time at Oakley? Bloody hell, mate. Miles. Go on. I'll give, I'll give you a point for the closest. We'll go closest first. Well, I should have gone second then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't change it. 22. Okay. Jeff, I'll give you right of reply. God, that's a lot. Took a lot well, of wickets. Based on that, I'm, I feel obliged to go 21. Point to Jeffrey. He oh. took 18 oh. in his time. Far out. That overs what I would have gone. Do you know what's funny? It's actually 2 all. So, is it? Yeah, I've got a tiebreaker. Actually, player. very quickly, I've got a fun fact for you about Ben Pinwell's career. Go on. His last ever wicket for Oakley was caught by who? I'm, re- I'm throwing the quiz back at you. Wasn't me. <laughs> yep, no, uh, it wasn't you. Was it you? It was me. Very nice. Not keeping. Not keeping. Not keeping. Yep, in the field. Uh, Sorry. 
back to the quiz. I was going to go say Elliot, but the better brother. But yeah, anyway, I am the better brother. Yeah. No, no, it's in <laughs> Elliot. But anyway, convinced me back to the club after a sabbatical. So mm. good on him. Um, tiebreaker. So Chris Anderson, who played for Australia versus Ormond, uh, for play for Oakley. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Played against Ormond in 2002-2003 and he scored the highest score in first 11 history. Again, I'll go closest For score. Oakley? For Oakley. Nearest to the score wins. You can go first this time, Jeff. Yeah. She's voluntarily fair. giving him the buzzer. that's fair. Um, biggest score for Oakley. Yeah. Have we ever had a double tap? I'll give you a hint. No, it is not a double. <laughs> not in the first 11, at least. Maybe in other grades, I'm not quite sure. But in uh, the first 11, we have never had a double It'd have time. to be around 150, um, but I'll go overs. I'm going to say 167. 167. And Milosh? I feel like it's lower than that. Okay. 161. And the game goes to Jeffrey Latham. Congratulations, oh, my man. Oh, Scored what? 175. Oh, in that you're pretty close. Well, yeah. Not so it was pretty close, went overs. Uh, when I heard the 150, I was like, oh, boys. <laughs> we c- could be well short here. Because <laughs> based... And these, all of these stats provided by our residential stats man taking over after Rolly. Uh, Rob Howes, big shout out to Doogie. Thank you, uh, Rob. Provided all of those stats to for me. Not bad, um, dude. Yeah, not bad. Um, Sorry yeah, about our performance. Yeah, it was pretty short. fantastic. No, I won. So. I think they're from memory, when I was looking this afternoon making the quiz, I think there were four scores over 150 in our history for the first 11. A um, right. couple of like 150s and 156s. Um, but yeah, there you go. There brings the end to my quiz. So congrats, Jeffrey Latham, winner of the second installment of Jiro's Quiz. All right, that was Jiro's Quiz. Well done, Latho. Commiserations to me. <laughs> one and one. I'll take it. I'll, I'll train. I'll get better. And I'll come back stronger. Um, that train. is the end of our episode. Thanks for listening once again to the Mighty Oaks podcast. It's a huge week here at Oakley. Finals time. We've got the twos, threes, and fours all playing finals this weekend. It's going to be hot. It's going to be intense. And it's going to be three out of three wins. Come on, the Oaks. Thanks again to Ray White, our community partner and our sponsor. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a rating on Spotify. Share it around to your friends. Tell them to support the Oaks in finals. And we'll see you next week, hopefully with some good results, here on the Modi Oaks podcast. Good night.